All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Uh, brothers and sisters, it is so good to be um, with you once again. I'm so grateful to Celebrate Mercy for continuing these wonderful programs and making something that's available to all of us uh, every day in, in Ramadan, mashallah, and then also throughout the year. Um, I, I would say, except I know, I don't know if there's anyone who's joining us from the Southern Hemisphere. I do know that that often we have some of our uh, community from South Africa who joins us. But I would say that uh, at least for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, coming into to Ramadan at the beginning of spring also is just one of those beautiful lessons for us. Uh, the changing seasons are always exciting and, and stressful in some ways. There's many things that we're, we're doing in the change. Our bodies feel the change. And of course, this combined with uh, with the changes of Ramadan, the change in how we spend our days and nights, uh, when we're eating, when we're drinking, what we're doing with our time, it's a big shift. And it and all of these things, uh, the shift that comes out of observing this beautiful um, this beautiful ritual, this these beautiful and very ancient practices of, of fasting and gathering together, you know, all of that brings to, to our minds and to our hearts and to our bodies, combined with the shift of the season, uh, is a time for us to really benefit from all of these lessons. And of course, what they are uh, for us, what is in the Quran are the ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us, and what is all around us are the ayat, the signs, the created signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the created signs of nature, of the seasons, of the birds, of the sun and moon, uh, of the stars, the created ayat of the people around us. With each Ramadan, we see them growing, some of them increasing in strength, some decreasing in maybe their physical strength, sometimes even cognitive abilities, but perhaps the spiritual strength is gathering even more. So all around us are these ayat. And uh, this is what this first verse is about, is about the reminders of these ayat. And of course, there are those direct reminders that come through preaching through teaching, through the recitation of the Qur'an. So when we talk about the ayat of the Qur'an, we have this annual remembrance through uh, the reading, the intensified and more frequent reading of the Qur'an and reciting of the Qur'an that we do, uh, many of us, on our own, and also that we do together in community. And that communal recitation every night out loud is is a group reminder for us what the Quran actually says. So it helps to confirm, and this is true since the very beginning of the revelation, that reciting the Quran out loud in Ramadan is a way for all of us to be reminded of the content, to uh, to remember to perhaps memorize again, and also has been a persistent form of um, preservation of the Qur'an from the very beginning. Because when there are these massive groups of people together listening to the Qur'an, uh, there's no possibility that, uh, that anyone could forget the contents of the Qur'an or become confused about what the words of the Qur'an and the ayat of the Qur'an really say. So this is uh, the Qur'anic recitation. And then there are the remembrances, the ayat of the seasons, the created ayat signs, as I mentioned, even the feelings in our own body. And when we think about that in Ramadan, we are reminded through our hunger, through our thirst of our ultimate dependence 
absolute dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, our sustenance, for uh, letting the water flow um, out of the ground so that we could get it or through the lakes and the streams so that we can access it. And if that were to disappear, we, we have nowhere to turn for that, as we see in many places around us today, very sadly. Of course, if we lost our ability, our own physical ability to eat or swallow, to eat and drink, um, we would not be able to break our fast or to begin our day with suhoor. So as we pay all of these things, all of these actions are reminders. Uh, are, are signs for us and are re reminding us to pay attention to these signs because of course we eat and drink every day but Ramadan itself is a reminder to pay more attention to these signs to our Quran the Quran that guides us and then to all or everything that is around us even our own selves that can um, should cause us to reflect on our creator and our place in the creation and subhanAllah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says this in ayah 57, who does more wrong than those who reminded of their Lord's ayat? And I'll say signs here because the word is is ayat. And so I'm taking that in the in both ways, both the ayat of the Quran and also the signs around us. So and who does more wrong than those who, when reminded of their Lord's signs, turn away from them and forget what their own hands have done. This is the beginning and it's quite striking when we think of it. Who women adlamu? Who is, who is, and this is, dhulm is not just wrong. It is, it is severe wrong. It is harm. It is hurt. It is oppression. It is a very heavy form of wrongdoing. Volm. We're not talking about uh, some minor, minor thing, but volm is, is a darkness and a heaviness. And subhanAllah, as I reflected on this, I thought it's so easy for, for any one of us. If I asked you, who is an oppressor? Who is oppressing others now? How many could we identify? I mean, sadly, thousands. We look around and see today how many people are living in a situation where they are under oppression, where, where we see those who are really committing this oppression and harm and wrongdoing towards others, whether through war or enriching themselves unjustly by preying on those in need, or who use every means uh, at their disposal to disrespect and demean and hurt others. Zulm. This is what I think when I think of a zalimin, or those who, who commit oppression and heavy wrongdoing. But our Lord says, who could be the most one of committing zulm than the one who, when reminded of their Lord's signs, turns away from them? SubhanAllah. So, so all dhulm really begins from this turning away from Allah's signs. And the greatest dhulm then is the one that is within the person. When the person reminded of the signs, whether directly, indirectly, you know, interaction, interacting with the revelation or clearly seeing through Allah's creation the reality of things, which is that we are the servants of Allah only and we are not the masters of creation but we are the servants of the creator that is where it all begins is turning away from those signs now at this point then turning away from them and then forgetting what their own hands have done and there's a there's an interesting one of the commentators gave this this um interesting observation that that what's happening here is that there's a great interaction here between, of course, the fact that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can guide and can guide anyone. 
and all power is with Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Yet Allah grants us a degree of agency, temporary agency, to make choices in this life. And that is why we're accountable. That's why we are morally accountable and spiritually accountable. So it is this act of turning away with oneself, taking action, that then leads to what happens. And by turning away, we also conveniently, by not seeing, by not looking, by turning our face away from what is the truth, which is what Allah is revealing to us, then it becomes easy to forget. And even to forget our own role in what happens next. And what happens next is a consequence of this choice that is made. So in the next part of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have cloaked their hearts so they cannot comprehend and put heaviness in their ears. And if you call them to guidance, and here is, is to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you, the Prophet, call them to guidance, they will never be guided. So you know, sometimes people ask this question, what is the relationship between the power of Allah, the power of our Lord to guide people, and that guidance is, is completely in the hands of Allah and human agency? Well, this shows very clearly that, as I said, we begin with the reminder of God's signs, of our Lord's signs, and it is the person then who commits this, this essential and fundamental act of wrongdoing in turning away. And the turning away makes it easy to forget because then we're distracted and busy and looking at other things. So we forget even that we've done that action and we can ignore the consequences now of what we were, we were doing. But having done this now, we are in, we have spiritually incapacitated ourselves and that spiritual incapacitation is what the cloaking of our hearts or veiling of our hearts is that this is where because everything uh, all of our actions that are put into uh, reality or existence by the power of Allah then this is the cloaking of our hearts those who turn away their hearts will be cloaked so now they can't even understand what is being said. And there is this heaviness or blockage or dullness in their ears. And so it seems like, and, and you can see it sometimes, you'll see two people, they're seeing the same situation, they're in the same context, they're listening to the same thing, but it's as if they're in two completely different realities. And in a way they are, because we are seeing the world through these choices we have made, through these habits that we've developed, through these barriers we have created uh, um, or we have brought um, upon ourselves by these actions. And now this is truly the a state of vulm and of, of darkness. And it is a very sad state of spiritual incapacity. Yet, of course, our Lord is merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim. Allah is ar-Rahman. Allah is al-Ghafur. Allah is the one who is Ghafur, Rahim, merciful, forgiving. Allah is the one who will never leave us without any um, hope whatsoever. So even though people have made these choices, still Allah leaves us the, the path until the end of our life full of possibilities, full of possibilities. We, people may be stuck in a certain place and they may be blocked, yet your Lord is all forgiving. Al-Ghafur Rahma, and full of mercy or the source of mercy, the one who possesses mercy. And so here is this interlude, this opportunity. 
there is an opportunity as long as we are still in this life, as long as we move forward for that turning back. But at this point, it, it, it will be happening by the grace and mercy of God. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful and so full of kindness and generosity to us. We see this, alhamdulillah, in our own lives. I know I've seen it in my life. Uh, and I think uh, so many of us can attest to this, whether it's through a, a profound, complete um, conversion or reversion, returning to Allah, or whether it is those smaller um, times in our lives where we have fallen off a little bit and started to harden up, started to become a little bit hard of hearing to what is the truth, what is the, the signs from God, what is the message um, that Allah is sending us all around us, not wanting to listen to the reminders, but then we are brought back. And all of us have that, or many of us, I would say most of us, have that throughout our lives, those opportunities for pulling back before there is a complete shutdown. So Allah, our Lord, the one who uh, whose servants we are, is all forgiving and full of mercy. And no one can block that. No one can legislate that away from God. And no matter how much we might um, judge, in many cases very justly, that a person has gone to such an edge that it may be, you know, could they ever really turn back? We know that everything is possible um, if Allah wills it, inshallah. And so as long as we are on this this earth, as long as we live in this dunya, there's a chance. Because if our Lord were to, you know, seize those, and here we're talking about those who have, inshallah, this is none of us who have, who have turned away from Allah's signs and become this. But for those people, if Allah were to take them to account, truly for what they had committed it it would it would happen right away you know what that turning away and that dhulm is so much that from our perspective as human beings we wonder um shouldn't they be taken to account now why even let them continue of course only allah knows allah has wisdom for all of these and for some it may be that they will take the opportunity to turn in repentance. And uh, while we have some measure of forgiveness and some measure of mercy, Allah's is unlimited. So it may be incomprehen incomprehensible to us, but of course, we only know a very, we have a very limited perspective of what we understand and we do not know what Allah knows. Only Allah knows the reason for all of these things. Yet, we know that it's true. We know that it's true that it is possible for this turning back, even though, um, of course, our Creator has the right to take people into account at any time, but in Allah's forgiveness and mercy, that is not what, uh, what is done in most cases. Yet, yet, even though there is this delay, there is this delay in accounting and an accounting that justly could happen at any moment. It will come at some point. There is an appointed time for all of those and they will not be able to escape that time. So if Allah has delayed that appointment for accounting, of those who commit dhulm and that dhulm that is starting within themselves and then uh, being expressed in this dunya, there is eventually an appointed time. Allah knows what that is and sometimes uh, it, it may be for them to accumulate in their misdeeds and punishment and sometimes it may be to allow the opportunity for forgiveness. 
So this is the end of um, Aya 58 that follows the passage, uh, the first section that's shown here. So to recap, what are these two, um, these two uh, ayat that within, I would say, within Surat al Kahf, which is such a, a majestic surah that is filled with so many mm, compelling images. Uh, for those of you who, who read Surat al Kahf regularly or follow along with Celebrate Mercy's beautiful um, Friday reflections, um, you've become very familiar, inshallah with the patterns of the surah and the narration by Allah of uh, story after story, parable after parable, example after example, that, that tells us and shows us how to pay attention into our life, how to look deeper, how to be patient with the qadr of Allah. But so much of this is has these compelling images, the cave, the youth, the boys, the garden, right? The the two people in the garden, um, the Dhul uh, Qarnayn uh, um, and, and filling in the gap. So, so many really compelling images that sometimes we may skip over uh, uh, ayat in a surah like Surah Al Kahf uh, as a kind of. Um, you know, we may just see it as as just some verses filling in between these compelling stories. But if we slow down and take uh, some time and really contemplate them, we realize that like every single surah, like every single ayah, like every single word in the Qur'an, Allah is telling us something that is very weighty, that is full of meaning, and that can... Um, uh, help us really understand our place in this dunya and in this creation and how how much possibility there is for us to constantly improve and also to realize that while well, we see around us so much that is upsetting, you know, so much that is upsetting every day to know that Allah has a plan for everyone, that Allah is the most ju just of judges, and that Allah is the most merciful of any who have mercy, indeed is the source of justice and mercy. And so we, we do need to be patient and hopeful and trust in Allah.